Hey guys, welcome back to Monoview. Today we're gonna to be going over motion detection on all of your cameras, as well as how to set up the recording schedule for your motion detection. And then finally, I'm gonna teach you guys how to set up motion notifications on Montview Go for your smartphones. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is on the NVR, we're gonna go over to alarm. Then on the left side, you're gonna select video detection. Now the motion detection tab should be highlighted on the top left. Then next, you'll wanna choose which channel you would like to activate motion for. Once you've picked the channel that you wanna enable motion detection for, simply click the little button next to enable and switch it from gray to blue. This will activate it. If you're going to set up multiple cameras, you'll wanna make sure that you hit the apply button before moving on to the next channel. So one more thing to know about motion detection is your region settings. Now, if we click the setting button next to region here, we'll be opening up a new screen and it's gonna take you to a live view of what the camera's seeing. What this red grid indicates is the masking option for your cameras and your motion detection. Everything found underneath the red squares will be activated by the motion detection. And if you notice that you can click on any one of these squares and make sections where it's cleared off. What this does is it makes those cleared off sections not activate the motion. You'll wanna use this if you have flags, chimes, bushes, trees, anything that consistently blows in the wind or moves around that will likewise activate your motion detection. And you'll wanna obviously prevent this for preventing false notifications. So use the camera masking to clear off these areas and that will be very helpful. Another thing you can do is if you move your cursor to the upper middle of the screen, you'll see a menu pop down. What this is, is a sensitivity and threshold menu. Sensitivities in relation to the movement of the objects and threshold is relation to the size of the objects. So what this means is a low sensitivity is going to not detect slow moving objects and a high sensitivity will pick up any object moving at any speed. The threshold, if it's at zero, it's going to detect anything from little tiny bugs to big cars. However, if your threshold is set to 100, it is only going to detect large objects like vehicles. Keep in mind that the sensitivity and the threshold, there is no universal setting because every camera scenario is different. And this is also due to the fact that a camera sees a 2D view. So keep in mind when you're setting these up that objects in the distant portion of the camera's view are going to appear much smaller than objects closer to the camera. So this will depend on what threshold picks up. Sometimes what we see is if people just choose to have motion detection without consistent recording, sometimes it can be a little bit jarring because if a person is in the very far background, they're going to appear small and they're not actually going to cross that threshold marker until they're so far away from the camera where they appear large enough to cross the threshold. So what we hear from our customers is that people will seemingly appear in the footage. And this is because the threshold was set at such a level that it did not detect them until they were so close to the camera where they were able to trigger that. So just a little bit of a heads up when you guys are setting this up that that is a possibility and you guys need to account for that. So the last thing here is that you'll notice that there's also an option for multiple color squares. And this is essentially giving you the ability to set different thresholds and sensitivities for different regions of your screen. Once you're all done setting your threshold and your sensitivity and your camera masking, just right click to exit out of this screen. And before you move anywhere else, make sure you hit apply in the bottom right to save your settings and your changes. So the next thing is we're gonna set up the recording schedule. To do this, we're gonna go back to the main menu and we're gonna select storage. From here, we're gonna select schedule on the left side. And once you get to the screen, we'll notice that we've got Monday through Sunday listed on the grid, along with different color codes for your different types of recording. Now, in order to edit these, there's a couple different methods. One is you can click on the square that relates to what you wanna edit. And once there's a check mark in there, you'll notice that when you click on the grid, you'll fill in that color for that day. Now there's a couple of tricks here where we can choose to edit all the days at once, 
And then there's also a trick where we can edit all the cameras at once. So you don't have to do this 32 different times if you've got a 32 channel system. Uh, another thing to keep note though, is that obviously you can customize each individual camera to have a different recording schedule, if you so choose. Another method here is you'll see these gear wheels on the far right side that correspond to each day. My advice would be just to click the very top one that represents Sunday. And then once you get in here, you'll notice different periods. So this is how you can get a really detailed schedule if you wanna individualize it for your cameras. However, this is a nice way to just mass edit them as well. So here you're just gonna take period one, should say 00 through 2359 or 2400. That just means all day. Then we're gonna click regular or general and then MD or motion detect or anything else that you want to apply here. Once you check that, then move to the bottom of the screen and you'll want to make sure that you're checking the days that you want it to apply to. When you're all set, hit OK, and then you'll notice the grid fills out with those colors. Once you have that recording schedule looking like you want it to, make sure to hit apply before you move on. So now that we've set and enabled the motion detection and set up the recording schedules, now we can jump onto the phone or tablet and head over to Montevideo Go. So on Montevideo Go, the first thing we wanna do is on the home screen, locate your NVR. Then you'll wanna find the three gray dots to the far right side, press those. Then you're gonna choose device details. Once you're in device details, you'll notice a notification option second down, click on that. Then you'll see a switch over to the right. Once you press that, it's gonna reveal a few options here. And for motion detection, we're obviously looking for motion detection. Click on that. Now, if you have a smart motion detect camera and you have SMD enabled, you'll wanna make sure that you activate SMD here. However, if you're just using standard motion detection, you'll wanna just click motion detection. Then finally, on this screen, it's gonna list out all of your cameras. And if you wanna apply to individual ones, just click the bubble that corresponds to that camera. Or of course, there's the option to select all of them up top. Once you've selected the cameras that you wish to get motion detection notifications for, then simply hit the back button on the top left corner, hit it one more time. And then when we're back to this screen, there's gonna be a blue save button in the upper right corner. Once we press that button, we're gonna notice that it's going to say subscribed successfully. Then, as long as you've got that, you are done and you should start to receive motion notifications when your cameras pick up motion. On a side note, it's also important to make sure that Montevideo Go has permissions to give your phone notifications. To check this, you'll want to go to your phone settings into the notification permissions and make sure that Montevideo Go has all permissions enabled. So once you guys have all these steps done, you should start to receive motion notifications on your phone and you should be good to go. If you guys have any more questions, of course, give our tech supports a call. And if you have any obstacles while trying to do this, again, give our tech support a call. We're always happy to help you guys out. Thanks for joining one of you guys. Have a good day.